G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday afternoon here in Australia and we continue to go down. I mean, it looks like a bit of a bloodbath. We are well under that $2 trillion mark. But this was $1.843 uh, trillion before, so now $1.869. So, you know, maybe people are starting to buy the bounce, uh, buy the dip, sorry, I should say, but it could be a bit of a fake out again. It's still the start of the weekend. We're in a sort of a bigger downtrend at the moment. So just be careful in thinking that this might be the bottom. Now, for me, I already spoke uh, about what I'm doing. I'm just buying the dip. I mean, I'm going to keep buying. Like, I, I would not be surprised if this gets down to around the $34,000 mark. Bitcoin, that is. I'm not saying it's going to. I think the buying pressure will, you know, become quite heavy long before it gets to there. But I think it can definitely go down lower. But does that mean it is going to go down lower? Look, truth is, I don't know. I, I literally have no idea. You know, Time is going to be, you know, the great storyteller. We will know in time. And anyone out there who's telling you they do know exactly where it's going, you know, I'd be aware of someone that says that. But anyway, let's move on. I say this kind of stuff all the time, and I don't want to be a bit of a, you know, harp on like a, you know, broken record. But market cap's definitely down, and 10% the entire overall market cap. So that hurts a bit, and particularly the altcoins, you know, you can see here they're getting whacked. And that's what the way it is, you know. When they're pumping, they go up twice as hard as Bitcoin, and when they're dumping, they go down basically twice as hard at times as well. All right, Bitcoin dominance, still under 50%. So interesting, got down to 48, now it's back to nearly 50%. Ethereum dominance has climbed, and the gas price is still sitting around that 100 mark. They've been there for ages. All right, I mean, we can have a look. There's, you know, there's a lot of red here. It, it's a bloodbath, that's the only way to say. Now again, we've had a little bounce back in this hour, but you know, don't get too excited. We don't know if the bottom's in yet. It could be, it might not be. All right, so what's really pumped in the last 24 hours? Has anything pumped in the last 24 hours is probably a better, um, you know, question. Yeah, look, we've had some things that have done all right. Pirate chain, ah, me hearties. 15% <laughs> and up something, you know, 300% in the last seven days. I don't know a lot about pirate chain, but the fact it's got, you know, it's, it sounds like a meme coin, I'm not touching it. Could it pump higher? Yep. Could it dump really, really hard? Yep. So for me, not touching it. Bitcoin gold, I don't know why anyone would be sort of jumping on board. And then after that, it's all just sort of, you know, the stable coins that are, you know, up, you know, 0.5% or down, you know, 0.5%, something like that. So they stay, you know, fairly stable all the time. So we've got two coins out of the top 100 that aren't stable coins that have done well, but Bitcoin gold, it's still down 11% for the week. So again, buyer beware is my advice to you, and it's not financial advice. I can't offer you that, but it is my personal opinion, and that's what I offer you. My personal opinion is I wouldn't touch either of those coins. All right, so some things have done, you know, two things have done okay. That means a lot of things are really not going to have done well, and this is going to be interesting. I think we're going to see some massive losses here. I haven't checked, so we're doing this live. We're doing this together. Boom! Digibyte smacked. I mean, look, they're still up, you know, 12% for seven days, but that's a big dump. Sirecoin, BitTorrent, BitTorrent, you know, Dogecoin, same thing. It's still up for the seven days, but it's taken a big dip. Holocoin, Ravencoin, Ontology. I mean, you name it. We got 20, 30%, you know, dips on, you know, a lot of stuff here. So the market has really taken a hit. What can you do? You can't have the massive upsides with some pretty big downsides. Again, still $1.8 trillion is not too bad. I remember it was only... You know, a few months ago, and I'm talking a few, like maybe three, four or five months ago, we were struggling to kind of get over the $1 trillion mark. And then we went to two, I think nearly $3 trillion. So, you know, we're probably going to pull back to maybe around a 1.5, maybe even a little bit less, getting back down towards the $1 trillion mark. No guarantees in life. I don't know. We'll wait and see. But let's have a look at the charts. This might give us some interesting information. So we lost that 50-day moving average. Now we've, we're sitting right on the 100-day moving average at the moment. So this is very, very interesting. We haven't been back here for a long time. And look, we haven't been back to the 200 uh, in a really long time. We only touched the 200 once in this bull run. So again, for me, this is what I'm really looking for. 
I think we're probably going to lose the 100 in all fairness because this is, you know, it's Thursday evening over in the States, Friday here in Australia. So we probably, you know, might have more of a sell-off over the weekend. And again, this could last a while. This could kind of go on. It could be a slow kind of burn. I mean, this is not really slow, actually. But could be a burn for like, you know, a couple of weeks to maybe even sort of a month or two. That has happened in previous cycles. Maybe we're finally starting to experience some things that are, you know, somewhat similar to what they used to be. So that's what I'm looking for. The 100, is it going to hold? Well, I guess we'll know by kind of, you know, Monday, Tuesday next week. Because uh, it could sort of, you know, we could lose it over the weekend a little bit, but then it just bounces back and we go to new all-time highs. Definitely possible. I'm just not sure at the moment. I think we're probably going to see more downside. But like I said, for me, I'm not selling anything. I'm not panicking. I'm buying. I buy when it's going down in a bull market, and I believe we're still there. And when I think it's time for the bear market, then yeah, that's when I have already basically sold, you know, pretty much everything I want to sell. I always have a little bit left over, uh, you know, to sell just in case. But generally, I've kind of, you know, made my fairly big moves, you know, reasonably quickly, or at least that's what I plan to do this time. I didn't do that last time because I didn't know the markets well enough. Next time I will. I, I don't think this is over. For me to really kind of, you know, panic sell, Bitcoin would have to be, well, I'm just not panic selling, full stop. I'll never do that again. I, I've made my, you know, mistakes. And I, what I've learned is if you're in good projects, projects and you generally hold long enough, they'll break their old all-time highs. But again, never financial advice, just personal opinion. Let's have a look at some interesting stories I found here. So Bitcoin incentivizes renewable energy uh, and, you know, Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey agree. So Bitcoin uses a lot of energy at the moment and there's a lot of talk that, you know, it just costs too much and I agree with it. We spoke yesterday about, you know, Chris Larson, I think it was, uh, said, you know, maybe Bitcoin needs to move to proof of stake. You know, that could be an idea, but we can have a look down here. Some of Bitcoin's most prominent backers have sought to make the case for Bitcoin's environmental efficiency. With a collaborative paper from researchers at Financial Services, Firm Square and investment manager Arc Invest asserting that Bitcoin mining can drive increased efficiency in renewable energy production. And I agree. If it's you know going to do really well and everyone's going to get into it, they're probably going to put more into that. But that's not to say a proof of stake couldn't be better in the long run. But look, it, it could still have the upside for green energy. The paper authored by the Bitcoin Clean Energy Initiative, or BCEI, uh, seeks to counter the claim that the com- Copy computation required to secure Bitcoin is environmentally damaging and ruining the, pla- ruining the planet, arguing that Bitcoin mining incentivizes the generation uh, of electricity from renewable carbon sources. So I, I think that's sort of half true. Yes, I think it's going to push a lot more green kind of stuff, but I think you know it'd be better if we could get to you know proof of stake where it really doesn't use too much uh, energy at all, but it will kind of you know, incentivize people to get more into green energy. So there's, you know, there's elements of, you know, things that I agree there and there's elements of things that, you know, I think, you know, again, I think proof of stake's the better way to go, but I don't know if Bitcoin can do proof of stake. I don't know what's involved in that, whether it'll, you know, make the network not as secure. And if that's the case, then, you know, I guess we've got to weigh up, you know, can green energy sustain uh, Bitcoin uh, without, you know, eventually just simply having to rely on, us you know using fossil fuels and that or is this the way we can move forwards if we can move forwards with green energy then let's stay the way it is if we can't well then we just leave it uh then sorry if we can't then maybe we need to look at moving to proof of stake or you know something new that none of us even know about all right next bitcoin etf so uh sorry ethereum etf uh set off and 138 million start so far so again there's Yep, downside in the market, but there's still lots of bullish stuff happening. The impressive volume is still only a fraction of what the Bitcoin ETFs traded during their premium in Canada earlier this year. So the Bitcoin ETFs were bigger. And again, you know, people are probably going to panic now and want to get out of them. But, you know, that's them. That's new money slash dumb money. If you want to do that, you know, in my opinion, dumb money anyway, then, you know, you do what's right for you. But for me, I'm not panicking. I'm just simply holding I'm old school, <laughs> not even that old school, but you know, old school enough that I know panic selling is not what you do. You panic sell if there's really bad news and it sounds like the count, you know, the company is going to go broke or something. You know, fair enough, you can panic sell then if you're ever going to do it. But if you're just panic selling because there's a downturn in the market, that's just silly. 
again, in my personal opinion. All right, so available on the Toronto Stock Exchange, this is the Ethereum ETF, they have a combined trading volume of $138 million already. So that sounds like a few people are getting into the Ethereum ETF. That doesn't sound like overly bearish news, even though there's a downturn in the market. That's normal, that happens in all markets. Right, NFTs. So the old uh, band Weezer, I think they sung, sung the song Loser, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm just a teenage dirtbag, baby. <laughs> that's that's the song I remember from Weezer. I think it was from the movie Loser, sorry, and the song was Teenage Dirtbag. Great song, pretty good movie as well. But moving on, crypto collectibles based on physical toys inspired by its OK Human album will la launch on the Wax blockchain next week. So again, not, not Ethereum where most people would think it's going to go. Now, rock band Weezer will launch a set of NFT collectibles on the Wax blockchain starting April 29th. So that's not too far away. The set will include 12 ultra-rare NFTs that can be exchanged for physical toys based on the band's latest album. So, again, the whole NFT space, it's not dead. Uh, and, you know, it's here to stay. It will be a big thing, bigger thing in the future. But, you know, you just need to ask yourself, you know, how much are you going to pay for these NFTs? And are you buying it as an investment? Because Weezer aren't the biggest band in the world, and then you know they may not be remembered in years to come. You know, I'm not saying they're a nothing band, but you know, really they haven't had a whole lot of big songs uh, of recent times. So you wouldn't want to pay too much for these, thinking that they're going to make you money, because they probably won't. But if you're buying it for sentimental value, and you're not paying too much for it, absolutely, it's like card collecting, and you know, collecting shirts from the bands and all the rest of it. Same kind of thing, but just be careful if you're rushing out thinking, this is an NFT that I'm gonna you know, spend 50 bucks on and it's gonna turn into a million. Chances of that are probably pretty slim, even with the ultra rare ones, in all fairness. Right, refinance, I spoke about this uh, quite some time ago. I invested, it hasn't done so great for me. It's probably doing really bad right now, price-wise, but look, that's just the way things go. I still believe in the project and it's got some good news. Based on the Substrate framework, Reef Chain will be launched in May. So again, that's not too far away. Reef's finance product vows to provide enhanced scalability uh, and EVM compatibility. Reef Finance has announced that its Substrate-based mainnet will see the light of day in May 2021. It promises to make DeFi easy by enabling developers to use a highly scalable, scalable and full EVM compatibility network that's integrated into the Polkadot system. So Reef uh, Finance, they're not dead. There's been a lot of talk about, you know, whether they are a scam and things and all the rest of it. You know, from the information that I found, it didn't seem like a scam. It doesn't mean it's not. Uh, you know, I guess only they would really know. But, you know, I'm still pre pretty happy with my investment uh, in Reef. Uh, I'm going to hold it. I'm not going to get rid of it. It is down. I haven't made any money from it. But again, that's just because of where I bought it in the cycle. It's still a pretty new project. I have faith in it. So, you know, to anyone who's interested in Reef, go and, you know, do some further research. But they are still building, uh, and, you know, you can't do much more than that. Again, and that's the thing I spoke about the other day with most of these crypto projects. They're not finished. Very few of them are actually finished projects, if any of them. Are, you know, the stable coins might be finished projects. But most of the other things, you're, you're like a VC. So you're an early investor, a venture capitalist. You're putting money into something that sounds good and you think is going to do well in the future and make it, but most of them haven't lived up to all of the hype yet. They've lived up to some of it, but there's still a long way to go. All right, last but not least, Coinbase. I thought this was pretty interesting. So they have put uh, USDT, so Tether, on Coinbase Pro. So US coin, uh, crypto exchange Coinbase Pro has finally listed the world's most popular stablecoin tether and i think this is why they've done it because it is the most popular in an announcement on april 23rd coinbase pro stated that it had enabled trading for the tether stablecoin the move is huge news as previously the leading exchange would only support its own native stablecoin usdc and that's what i use uh, a lot i have used as tether or just you know all the fight about it kind of really put me off it but look so far it seems like tether's here to stay the only version of USDT available will be the Ethereum ERC-20 standard though, because I think Tether's on a few uh, other different uh, networks as well. 
but they'll only be using the Ethereum one. So, you know, there's gas fees that have to kind of be uh, thought about with that. But usually, I think the platforms themselves are kind of covering the gas fees to some extent. But again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I don't use Coinbase anyway. Uh, and I don't do a lot of trading anyway. I literally buy stuff and just hold uh, and then sell. So gas fees, uh, something that I don't have to worry about too much. But very, very interesting, and I think, you know, that last part, the most popular stable coin is why Coinbase have done it. You know, they, they need to compete with the other big chains, and if they don't have Tether on there, which is what most people use, well, then it's going to hurt their, you know, their bottom line. So USDC coin is theirs uh, with the Circle sort of network, but they had to, you know, not accept defeat, because it's not defeat, but they just had to accept that there's another coin out there that people really, really like as well, and it, again, would hurt their bottom line if they simply didn't add it. So they have. All right, that's it from me. Not a whole lot today. Again, the weekend's coming up. The news generally gets pretty slow. You know, unfortunately, I think Bitcoin goes lower. There we go. It has broken lower. Now we're down below the 49,000. We've gone to the 48. This is really the mark I'm looking for, $34,000. This is where the 200-day moving average is. If Bitcoin gets down to here, I am throwing everything I have at it. I'll literally, if there's something I can sell, you know, get rid of, you know, whatever it is, I'm getting into Bitcoin. My altcoin positions, I'm just holding them because I don't think the bear, I don't think, sorry, the bull market's over. I think it's likely that Bitcoin bounces somewhere before the 200 day moving average. And if it doesn't do it at the 200 day moving average, it's going to be just a little bit above it or just a little bit below it. I don't think they're going to be able to push it that much lower. That would mean that you know, there's gen there'd have to be some bad news. It wouldn't just simply be because, you know, this kind of leveling out pattern was the peak. There wasn't anything overly parabolic about that. Anyway, that's my opinion. It's never financial advice. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. You know, if you're on that gain train at the moment, you must have been on one of those two coins and basically all in. Congratulations to you. For most of us, we're probably feeling a little bit of pain at the moment and it's probably going to continue. My personal advice is just don't panic. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.